Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the tree view control in Java FX. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, tree views. A tree view is a control that displays hierarchical data in a tree-like structure. So this control is found underneath the controls drop-down menu. Just drag and drop it, place it anywhere. And I'm going to give this tree view a unique ID. Let's call it tree view. Now, when we select tree items from our tree view, we still need to populate our tree view, but we would like to invoke a method whenever we select an item. So underneath the code dropdown menu, go all the way down to on context menu requested, and we can call a method when we select an item. So we'll need to place a method name here and here on mouse clicked. Now that will take care of setting up our tree view control. However, we still need to populate our tree view with data. And this data is known as tree items. And these tree items will be arranged in a hierarchical structure. So let's save and then head to our controller class. As always, refresh your FXML document and we need to declare a select item method. So let's do so within our controller class. Public void select item. Okay, and let's run it. Currently, we just have an empty tree view with no data within it. So we need to populate our tree view with data. And possibly one of the best places to write that code would be within our initialize method, but we need to implement the initializable interface. So controller implements initializable interface, and be sure to add any unimplemented methods. And I'm just gonna move this to the top because I like it at the top. Okay, let's use some FXML injection to inject our tree view. Private tree view, tree view. At this point, we need to create tree items to add to our tree view. Let's begin with a root item. So let's declare a tree item and we're going to list a generic data type of strings. If you're working with files, you'll probably list files here, but let's just work with strings because they're easy. So let's call this tree item root item equals new tree item. And we are going to pass in the text of this tree item. Let's say files, like it's some sort of big directory of some sort. Okay, then we need to add this root item, this tree item to our tree view. And let's take care of that near the bottom. So at the bottom, we'll type tree view dot set root and pass in a tree item we will pass in our root item now when we run this we should have our tree item within our tree view of files now here's the plan we're going to create more tree items and add these tree items as children to our root item maybe think of these like branches if files is the root we'll have a root branches and then leaves so let's create more tree items. I'm just going to copy this to save some time and paste it. Let's create a branch item. I'll call this branch item one. And what type of file should we have? Let's say we're working with pictures. Let's create maybe two more branches. So branch item one, two, and three. These will be kind of like different folders. So we have a folder for pictures. How about videos and music? Now we need to add all of these branches to our root item. And here's how. Type the name of your root item, dot get children, followed by dot add or add all. And we will pass in branch item one, two, and three. Now, after running this within our files tree item, we have pictures, videos, and music. But why stop there? These children can have their own children, so let's create more tree items. So let's copy all these and paste them. Let's call these leaf item, then give them a number. So one through six would be good. Okay, so within pictures, let's say we have picture one and picture two. Within videos, we could have 
video one and video two. And within music, music one, music two. Now we need to add these leaf items to each branch item. So it's kind of the same process as before, really. Okay, we have branch item one, two, and three. Okay, within branch item one, let's add leaf item one and two. And we can get rid of that. Okay, within branch item two, we'll have leaf item three and four. Then within branch item three, leaf item five and six. And that should be good for this example. So we're adding a bunch of leaves to our branches and adding the branches to our root. It kind of resembles a tree, that analogy. So let's try it. So we have files, then pictures, videos, and music. Now, when I select one of these tree items, we will invoke this select item method, but we need to get the current value of the tree item that we select. Here's how. We'll declare a tree item to store the current tree item that we select. So type tree item, list your generic type that you're working with. We're just working with strings for this example. Let's call this item equals tree view dot get selection model followed by dot get selected item. So whatever item that you select, we will store within item. And let's display the value. System.out.println item dot get value method. Now there's one issue that we're going to run into. Now here's the problem. If I was to navigate through my tree view by clicking these arrows, we will encounter a null pointer exception. However, if I was to click on these tree items, this will work as intended. We will get the current value of each tree item that we select. Now, the reason that we ran into a null pointer exception is because when we select these arrows, we are still invoking the select item method. After invoking the select item method, if there's no item to get, we will store null with an item. Then by calling the get value method of item, this will cause a null pointer exception. So let's check to see if item does not equal null with an if statement before calling the get value method. So let's write an if statement. If item does not equal null, then we will call the get value method of item. And let's try it again. Now, if I was to navigate through this tree view, we do not run into that null pointer exception and we can select each tree item from our tree view and get the current value stored within. You can also add icons to each of these tree items. I'll just show you one for files, but you can copy the process for the rest. So within my source folder, I have this PNG file named folder icon and it's about 25 by 25 pixels. So you'll need something small. Now, when you construct a tree item, you can also pass in an argument for a new image view. So after we create files, let's pass in a new image view. And then within the constructor of our new image view, I will pass in a new image and list the file name or the file path. This is folder icon.png. And next to this tree item, I have the intended image that I would like to use. So to add an image to a tree item, when you construct your tree item, you can pass in a new image view, then an image, then the file name or the file path. Here's one last trick for you all. So to initially hide this root item and display each of these children, we can use the set show root method of tree view. So type tree view dot set show root and we can pass in false. Now, when we display this tree view, the root item is hidden and all of its children are instead displayed. So that's another option available to you too. Well, everybody, that is the tree view control. It is a control that displays hierarchical data in a tree-like structure. If you would like a copy of all this code, I will post this to the comment section down below. But yeah, that is the tree view control in JavaFX.